Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. It's Thanksgiving week, and even though it's been one of the worst years in recent memory, we still need some things to be thankful for. On this week's episode, I'll be discussing events that are going on this year, plus giving histories of two neighboring towns, Lennox and Lee. Also, I'll be discussing how Pittsfield has changed their rules and regulations for COVID. First, it's time for this week's trivia question, which will be answered later. The question is, when was the first Macy Thanksgiving Day Parade held? Now, for this week's local entertainment headlines. Amid a recent spike in COVID-19 cases, Pittsfield has stepped back into step one of phase three. According to Pittsfield Mayor Linda Tyre, quote, we need to take action now to get us back on the right course and reverse this alarming trend. This comes as cases have risen from 25 on October 1st to over 150 active cases as of November 14th mostly due to issues in restaurants and schools. According to the state of Massachusetts, the following guidelines will be in place for Pittsfield. Indoor theaters and performance venues will be closed, and outdoor theaters and performance venues can be open at 25% capacity, but with no more than 50 people. Also, outdoor gatherings at event venues and in public settings have a 10 person limit. Museums, libraries, and gyms can be open at 40% capacity. And restaurants are now prohibited from indoor seating, only doing takeout and delivery. Additionally, the Pittsfield Public School System is going back to remote learning. All municipal buildings, including City Hall, are closed and Massachusetts is banning travel outside of New England. WWHEN is determined to keeping you up to date on the latest news about how cities and towns across Berkshire County are adjusting to the ever-shifting COVID-19 rules and regulations. On November 9th, the North Adams Planning Board approved owners Sean Richard and Christopher Horsepaul's application to open the Immersion Gaming Center. This will be one of the only arcades in Berkshire County. It will be located at 350 State Road in North Adams off of the Mohawk Trail, Route 2. At the meeting, which was held virtually, Richard stated, quote, we would offer some retro arcade coin-operated machines. And we're also looking to offer some more immersive gaming style setups with basic controls consoles like the Xbox and PlayStation. We also will be offering gaming like Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering, end quote. Richard and Horsefall are planning for Immersion Gaming Center to be open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. This led to questions about how much time younger people would be spending in the arcade, as well as the issues about COVID-19. The two owners are planning to have a sign-in sheet of people in the building, as well as restrictions of either 40% capacity or 10 people, pending any changes by the time immersion opens. Machines and seats will be sanitized frequently and the owners are planning on putting floor markers all around the buildings to encourage social distancing. The two are hoping for an opening date sometime in January, though nothing has been confirmed. Stay tuned to WWHEN for more information. The Edith Wharton House, aka the Mount in Lennox, is presenting Nightwood this winter season. Nightwood is a sound and light experience that will transform the Mount into a fantastical winter landscape 
for the holiday. It will immerse visitors in a series of vignettes designed to invoke elements of fantasy, mystery, and whimsy. The total route is approximately three quarters of a mile through the woods and gardens and includes both paved and unpaved pathways, inclines, and stairs. Nightwood will be taking place every Thursday through Sunday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. beginning on November 20th and running through January 3rd. Tickets cost $20 for adults, $10 for children between the ages of 6 and 18, and are free for children under the age of 5. Tickets will not be sold on site. You must reserve them at edithwharton.org. Please use caution and dress for the weather because trails may be muddy and or icy. The route is one way and there will be directional signs. Masks or face coverings are required and due to capacity limits, late arrivals will not be accepted. Now time for this week's history portion of WWATN. And on this edition, we'll be visiting the history of two neighboring towns, Lenox and Lee. We'll be starting off in Lenox, which is well known for its arts and entertainment culture. It is located to the northeast of West Stockbridge, and it has a population of approximately 5,000 people. Out of all the Berkshire County cities, towns, and municipalities, Lenox was among the slowest to be settled. It was in 1660, when Englishman Jonathan Hinsdale and others arrived at the location. And by the way, Jonathan Hinsdale is also where the town of Hinsdale gets its name. It was founded as Richmond in 1765. But Berkshire County divided Richmond into villages. The village that was originally named Yokentown was renamed Lennox that same year. The name Lennox is supposedly a misspelling of Charles Lennox, which is spelled L-E-N-N-O-X, the third Duke of Richmond in England. The story goes that the town was going to honor Charles Lennox. But, the name was misspelled by a clerk at the ceremony honoring the town. This cannot be confirmed nor denied. Early industries of Lennox included farming, sawmills, textile production, and glasswork. However, the town's rustic beauty helped it become an artistic colony. An art colony refers to the amount of artists, authors, and literary figures that live in the city or town. Some of the most famous people that made Lennox an artistic colony included Catherine Maria Sedgwick, best known for her domestic fiction novels, Fanny Kemble, one of the world's first great theater actresses, and Nathaniel Hawthorne, who wrote classics such as The Scarlet Letter. Lennox was also home to many millionaires and mansions in the 19th century. One of the people who helped started this Lennox Mansion movement included Samuel Gray Ward, an American poet and novelist. In 1844, he assembled tracts of land to create Lennox's first estate called Highwood. 32 years later, he hired architect Charles F. McKim to design another mansion titled Oakwood. With the help of McKim, Lennox became known as the Berkshire Cottage Area because it gave the opportunity for many of New England's wealthiest to show off their money. This wasn't New England's only wealthy town. Places like Newport, Rhode Island and Bar Harbor, Maine joined Lennox as a trio of wealth. The creation of federal income tax and the Great Depression stopped the creation of the mansions. However, 
Lennox managed to recover as an artistic town. As stated in previous episodes of WWATN, places like Shakespeare and Company and Tanglewood have kept the town of Lennox thriving. One current actor that was raised in Lennox was Finn Whitrock, best known for his roles in American Horror Story, The Big Short, and Unbroken. He was born in Lennox as his father worked at Shakespeare and Company as an actor. As a child, Finn Riddick worked in the theater as a page boy slash messenger. Eventually, his family moved to Los Angeles so Finn could focus on acting, where he attended the Juilliard School of Acting before his big break came in 2014 with the one-two punch of Unbroken and American Horror Story. Lennox has also been a popular spot for filming movies. Scenes of the 1996 movie Before and After were shot in the downtown area, while the Ventport Hall Mansion and Gilded Age Museum was the main filming location for the 1999 Oscar-winning movie The Cider House Rules. Lennox operates its own school system for the town's 800 students. It is the only Berkshire County town whose schools do not have a formal tuition agreement with any other town. The elementary school is known as Morris Elementary School. In an email conversation I had with Lennox Public Schools Committee Chairperson Robert Vaughn, he told me that the Morris Elementary School was originally built in 1960 on land given to by the Morris family. On a previous episode of WWHEN, I discussed abstract artist George Morris and his wife Susie Freelingheisen and their impact on American art. This art also adorns the elementary school. A mosaic on the side of the school was painted by Mr. Morris and remained there even when renovations of the school took place. The middle and high schools have a unique history. Originally, Lennox Memorial Middle School and Lennox Memorial High School were located in two separate buildings. Namely, the high school was located at 109 Housatonic Street for many years. However, the building was in constant disarray, and in 1966, it merged with the middle school at 197 East Street, where the school teaches both levels of students. The sports teams there are known as, somewhat controversially, the Millionaires, and their colors are maroon and gold. The town of Lee is located just to the south of Lennox and has a population of just over 5,000. The town occupies a land which was originally territory of the Mayan Indians. The first non-native settlement in the area of Lee was known as Dodgetown named after its founding settler, Asel Dodds. The name Lee was incorporated in 1777. It is named after Revolutionary War General Charles Lee, who led the American troops to victory at the Battle of Monmouth. In addition to Lee, Massachusetts, there are locations named after Charles Lee in New Jersey, New Hampshire, and West Virginia. The town is famous for its marble quarry. The first quarry was established in 1852 and in 1867 almost 500,000 cubic feet of marble was excavated and shipped on the Housatonic Railroad. In fact, some of the marble has been used in famous American buildings. These include a wing of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., 250 sculptures adorning Philadelphia City, and St. Patrick's Cathedral Church in New York City, among others. Lee has become a popular tourism destination. One of its most iconic places is the South Lee Historic District. Extending mainly along Massachusetts Route 2, 
Pleasant Street between Fairview Street and the Stockbridge Town Line. The village is a well-preserved 19th century mill village with fine federal and Greek revival buildings and a later 19th century paper mill. It was listed on the National Registry of Historic Places in 1999. They also contain a popular shopping mall. The Lee Premium Outlets are one of the most popular destinations in all of Berkshire County to shop. It is mostly a clothing store with name brands such as Nautica, J. Crew, Michael Kors, PacSun, and Under Armour. Lee operates its own school department, which also serves the town of Tieringham and has an option to serve Beckett, Otis, Sandsfield, and more. The elementary school is Lee Elementary School. Like Lennox, Lee Middle and High School serves students on both levels, from the 7th through the 12th grade. The school was originally founded in 1851 as just Lee High School. This began secondary public education in the town. The high school has been located at several different buildings, but is now firmly at 300 Greylock Street. In 2002, Lee Middle School merged with Lee High School, and just like Lennox, the two are co-op schools. Lee's athletic teams are named the Wildcats, and their colors are black and orange. As stated before, it's Thanksgiving week in Berkshire County, and this is going to be a much trickier than most Thanksgiving weekends. One of the most popular events is Small Business Saturday. Here, small businesses throughout Berkshire County and America in general have great deals. However, with COVID-19 rising dramatically in Pittsfield and other places in Berkshire County, I would not recommend doing either Black Friday or Small Business Saturday. Being out and about during a pandemic is not the best idea for this time. Pittsfield has not made a decision on whether or not they will hold Small Business Saturday. Please visit downtownpittsfield.com slash shop for more information and updates. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is a popular television to watch, event to watch, will still be going on, but with limits. In a statement, Macy said, quote, This year, the celebration will shift to a television-only special presentation showcasing the Macy's Parade's signature mix of giant character helium balloons, fantastic floats, street performers, clowns, and heralding the arrival of the holiday season with the one and only Santa Claus, end quote. The usual Thanksgiving Day Parade route which starts in Manhattan and ends in Midtown, will instead be staged in front of the Macy's flagship in Herald Square. Balloons will be carried around the location by an innovative, specially rigged anchor without people around the area. Additionally, the usual performances won't be held live this year. Instead, they'll be filmed with local talent who are complying with social distancing Regulations. Anyone who does not live in New York City also must stay home and not watch the parade. The 94th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will be airing on NBC on Thursday, November 26th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch it on any device or television that has access to a live NBC feed. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade also answers the question to this week's trivia. As a reminder, this week's question was, When was the first Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade held? The answer is 1924. At 9 a.m., on the sunlit morning of November 27, 1924, Macy's gave the children of New York a particularly special Thanksgiving treat as a police escort led the start of the parade from the intersection of 145th Street 
and Convent Avenue. The parade was originally meant as an opportunity for Macy's, which had only been established recently, to show non-native New Yorkers about their business. As time went on, the event grew into the popular event that it is today. They only lost two years due to World War II, but other than that, it has been held every year, even during the COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, more than 3.5 million people attended the event. Obviously, that won't be the case this year. Another popular event that goes on every year is NFL football. Every year since 1934, two or three games are played on this holiday to celebrate America's favorite sport. This year, the crowds may be smaller or non-existent, but the players will still be giving it their all. This year's NFL Thanksgiving games consist of the following. First, the Houston Texans will be playing against the Detroit Lions, who have played in every single NFL Thanksgiving game since its inception, with the exception of the World War II years. This will be played at 12.30 p.m. on CBS. After that, the Washington football team will be squaring off against the Dallas Cowboys. This represents the most played NFL game on Thanksgiving and will be held at 4.30 p.m. on Fox. Finally, the Baltimore Ravens and Pittsburgh Steelers will face off in a divisional matchup in the night game, 8.20 p.m. on NBC. Please note that all games are scheduled to change depending on COVID-19 testing of players. Check NFL.com for updates. Finally, many people consider 2020 to be one of the worst and most difficult years ever. However, since it is Thanksgiving, we still need something to be thankful for. Whether we are celebrating with our families at an actual Thanksgiving dinner or virtually on screen, we still need to be together even in this extremely trying year. As a tradition, maybe everyone should state what they are thankful for at the dinner. I personally am grateful for a loving household and family that has supported me during this COVID-19 time, as well as supporting my WWATM program and being able to film this show and passing it on to the world on television and YouTube. If it wasn't for my family, as well as my camera person, Charlene SW, who has helped me in so many ways, I don't think WWATN would be where it is today. That ends this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. You can watch this week's episode on channel 1301 of PCTV, CTSB TV, and NBCTC. Air times on all three of these networks vary. Visit the website shown here for more information. Also, if you would like to see the episodes in HD quality, make sure to check out my YouTube page at RT Weary. Thank you, and stay safe and home during Thanksgiving.